chose to receive. You look at Lance Taylor, you saw the numbers here for Kurt Ferentz. You can't get more of a contrast between the two head coaches. And Lance Taylor in year number one as the Western Michigan head coach had to deal with some transfers leaving Kalamazoo, but definitely some transfers and some Big Ten guys who have made an impact for this Western Michigan team here this year. Caden Weijin receives the first kickoff and a big gain across the 40 and a good start here for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Cade McNamara trotting out for his second home game here in Iowa City. And you look at his season numbers, the completion percentages not quite there and when in his career what he did here at Michigan, but but definitely respectable. 15 and three record as a starter. We know he brings some experience, but like you said, it's the timing that he's got to get here from week three to the end of the regular season. A championship pedigree. He was the quarterback that defeated Iowa in the Big Ten championship game just two seasons ago. A two tight end set that Iowa opens up with and a handoff to Jazzy and per Patterson. A gain of four, second and six. Patterson again with the touch going right up the gut. Tackle is made by Tate Halleck. Michigan State transfer played four years in East Lansing, a fifth year senior. Third and short the edge and a first down pickup. This is a Bronco defense penetration in the backfield. They got five sacks in their first two games. And 15 tackles for loss in the first two. First pass play, it is picked off. Tamari Roberson on the first pass attempt by Cade McNamara and a turnover on the first drive here for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Trayson Borgay is your quarterback for Western Michigan, getting the first start of the season for him. We anticipate the Broncos using at least two quarterbacks here today. The first pass play with a flag coming out is complete to Jelani Galloway. Now we'll see what the, the flag is Pass about. Pass interference. Offense number 29. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So Trayson Borgay, as I talked about, getting his first start of the season. He started the fourth quarter against Syracuse in a loss. In fact, Western Michigan played all three quarterbacks last week against the Orange and stuffed Borgay out of the gun and back to throw. <laughs> it is incomplete again trying to target Gal Galloway. Testing to Gene's side. They're going to learn really quickly. This Bronco offense brings up third and 21. Fakes the pass and again off the hands of Galloway. So Carson Voss will have to punt out of his own end zone. And DeJean fields it right at about the 42 yard line and is brought down at about the 46. Handoff is taken across midfield. LaShawn Williams is now your tailback. He gets tripped up. Big third down play here for the Iowa Hawkeyes. McNamara avoids the pressure and scampers over and picks up the first down. So a good decision by the Iowa QB. It's first and 10. And swings it over to Deontay Vines. Power formation now for the Hawkeyes. They've shown a lot here in these first two series. Patterson again with the carry. A very short gain. McNamara back to throw. Got a little bit of time. Now he's got to get away from pressure. Has to get it away. And there's that Western Michigan defense getting in the backfield. That's Marshawn Nealon that you had pointed out. The impact that he can make. Torrey Taylor coming out. Hunter here for the Hawkeyes. Very popular player, too, I might add. Oh, Got the yeah. loudest cheers when they were announcing, and look at this, this is why. Punt coverage there, Tory Taylor making good on it. Cooper DeGene. Western Michigan backed up in their, in their end zone, but a good run by Borgay, who takes it for a first down. And Trayson Borgay reading that perfectly. 
and getting WMU out of trouble. On first down, and off again to Buckley. We got a Wildcat quarterback. Marion Kowalski. That's a wrinkle that the Broncos haven't shown yet this year. 10 to 15 play drives would be ideal for them this afternoon. Borgay back in the gun. And looking deep down the sideline, the pass is caught by Sampucci. Sampucci taking it all the way in for the Bronco touchdown. 64 yards, the connection. Trayson Borgay to Anthony Sampucci for the first score of the afternoon. Palmer Domsky for the extra point. Weijin fielding the kickoff. All that the officials have to see and, you know, Iowa representatives have to see is lightning within eight miles here of Kinnick Stadium. If they see that, it's it's delayed about 30 minutes, but we will we will wait. The game for the, is in a lightning next. delay. Yep. So they that's exactly what happened. All right, so just under a 40-minute weather delay. Again, there was lightning that was spotted within an eight-mile radius here of Kinnick Stadium. And the reason for the delay, but we are back to playing football. 5.33 left to play here in the first quarter. We'll see what this Iowa offense can draw up a little bit. And heads over to their tight end. It's Steven Stilianos making the grab. Jazzy and Patterson, who started the game today, we haven't seen him in a few snaps, of certainly even counting before the weather delay. Deshaun Williams, though, taking the handoff. He will be the backup, and he got some extra room to run. How oh, about some yards after contact for Williams? First down just past midfield here for Iowa. And again to Williams, a huge hole right up the gut. Pickup of about six on that run. Their power formation. And another handoff to Williams. It's been all LaShawn Williams here on this drive and picks up another first down. A gain of 11. Why not feed the hot hand? Williams trying to search for the sticks there. Just a little bit short on the first down run. That's our first look at Kamari Moulton now in the offset. And how about this? Caleb Brown again. On the end around, we saw one of those early in the first quarter, but we haven't seen Jazzy and Patterson, right. who started this game. You mentioned Caleb Johnson is out with the ankle injury. Patterson getting the start, but we've seen a heavy dose of LaShawn Williams on this drive. Uh, Kamari Moulton making his debut for the season here as a freshman. Interesting note with Caleb Brown. While he was at Ohio State, probably played even more running back than wide receiver, so he's in a bit of a transition right now. It's Max White. The fourth running back appearing in the backfield here for Iowa. McNamara swings it out to the outside, and Luke Lachey brings it in. A 41-yard attempt here for Iowa and Drew Stevens. And the kick is up, and the kick is no good. The kick is no good. And so the first miss here for Drew Stevens of the season, he was a perfect three for three going into that attempt. Saddle pack pulls. And this Iowa defense pursuing just short of the first down and pushed out of bounds by Nick Jackson, the Virginia transfer. And running out the clock, that's the final play in the final few seconds here of this first quarter. <laughs> Salopak stays in as the quarterback. Zahir Abdus Salam is your running back here for Western Michigan. Abdus Salam with the carry right at the 35 yard line. Let's check in with Shane Sparks. 
injury updates for the Hawkeyes. Jazzy and Patterson, he is on the sideline doing some exercises, some drills. It appears he's going to come back into the game. And then Luke Lachey, we saw him come off the field. He was in the tent for about five, six minutes, not putting any weight on his right leg. He has now left the tent. He is on crutches, heading back to the Hawkeye locker room. Yeah, that is certainly something that Hawkeye fans don't want to see. Now with Patterson, it's good that he's back out on the field. We didn't initially see him come out of the locker room on the Iowa sideline when we resumed action after the weather delay. Third and short. Sour Pack again pulls and calls his own number across the 50, and the Broncos have another first down. Both quarterbacks, Lisa, have been really effective. Not only Borgay, but now Salopec on the read zone. At the mesh, Iowa's defense has to make sure they're actually having that force contained. In this case, Cooper DeGene does force the ball to bounce back inside. There's no one else there to clean it up. No gain on this play, this time for Salopec. Again, Nick Jackson has been active. Uh, the Virginia transfer for Iowa. Came to Iowa City in his career as a grad transfer, three 100 plus tackle seasons at Virginia. Certainly active, over 360 career tackles in his career. The two gap style of Iowa's defense, it puts a lot of pressure on their defensive tackles to sort of shore up both A gaps and the B gaps on the inside. Linebackers have to flow more effectively. And the flag coming out near side. Ball start. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. Second down. Greg Bloma, referee here today. Ball start called on Ted Cushy. FCS transfer. An offensive tackle. And Iowa wanted to get away from some of these long drives that opponents have had, especially a couple of times last week against Iowa State. Salopak decides to throw it and finds Austin Hicks, but a tackle for loss. Broncos three out of four with third downs here today already. Pressure coming, and Western Michigan gets rid of it, but well short of the first down. And watch out for LeVar Woods, the special teams coordinator for Iowa. He came after an earlier punt. Now, that was in a scenario where Western Michigan was backed up, though. Cooper Duchene back to receive. And he fields it inside by the five yard line. Cutting it out left side. Kinnick Stadium getting a little bit of life here in this return. Cooper Duchene shaking some of the Western Michigan Broncos off. Sean Williams on the first play gets about halfway to the sticks a gain of about five they had a hawk flying through kinnick stadium during the pregame it's a tradition that wasn't going on at the time when i was here playing for iowa and that's a part of where kate clark was, was pretty in awe of what was going on there look because the hawk got pretty low right yeah i mean released from the press box and then you, it just takes a beeline for the crowd now are they all known as falconers or if you're catching a hawk are you a hawker look you're the hawkeye. hawkeye i'm not the hawkeye i don't know what the term I'm, is for that i'm just a wild catch and lisa bluter the women's basketball head coach will join us the sean williams breaks free and it's a big cane williams across the 20 gets pushed out inside the 10 Kenai Lovely preventing six points. Patterson gets the call. And trying to fight his way to the five yard line. Williams switches back in. And he gets the handoff and gets pushed back. Tate Halleck once again. That safety who plays like a linebacker. Led the team at tackles both games. I like how decisive LaShawn Williams is in running the football right now, running behind his pads. Big moment. Opportunity here for Western Michigan's defense. In the past, in recent years, this could have been a QB sneak scenario from all the way out beyond the three-yard line. You still got the lower body hamper from Kate McNamara. Patterson's back in. So flip-flopping the tailbacks. Back 
McNamara back in the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown. Kick is up and good for Drew Stevens. We're tied at seven. So we're tied at seven. Eight and a half left to play here in this first half. And Jamal Haley takes a knee. Trayson Bourget is your quarterback who was back in. He was a starter today for Western Michigan. And finds his receiver up the guts. Blake Bosma, a big cane. Seeing the linebackers from Iowa really feel like they're overreacting on every play action fake to the interior of that line. That was a pickup of 43 yards. Push back at the line of scrimmage. Jay Higgins making the play. You see the receiver come in motion. And as he does, he ends up working. Now it becomes a route up the seam. The motion from outside in with Blake Bosma. And every time you motion, you're trying to do either of two things. You're trying to get information or you're trying to create leverage. There, Borgay was able to do both. He saw what coverage Iowa was in and then created the leverage because of the route that Bosma ran from there. They haven't used Blake Bosma as a receiver this year. In fact, their, their pass game has been somewhat limited. Borgay keeps it left side. And heads for the sticks to pick up the first down. There's been no edge to the Iowa defense time and time again as the QBs attack the edge on the read zone. As Borgay fakes the mesh point, not only the inside linebackers, the outside linebacker, the edge defenders, they're all barreling down inside. Picked up nine on that play, a sliding catch for another first down. And Kenny Womack. If you look back to a moment ago, Nick Jackson, the call calls for him to slant down towards the A gap. That means that the edge defender needs to be in position. Jamari Pittman got two noses. Borke gets tripped up. Motion out of the backfield. Borke had to get rid of it because the pressure coming by Ethan Herkett. Gain of a couple yards. Joe Evans on the tackle. And Buckley, so far, it's been a tough go for him on the ground. Field goal attempt here on fourth down. And the first field goal attempt of the season for Palmer Domsky. 27 yard attempt. Domsky's first field goal attempt is good. was awfully productive on that scoring drive for Iowa. 60 yards on three carries. Williams finds a seam, cuts it back, a first down and another big run. LeSean Williams is having himself a first half across the 45. And Lightning striking twice before the delay, just a couple of drives for this Iowa offense. But you see the, the yardage in particular, 140 in the plus percentage. Jazzy Patterson, who again is the starter here for Iowa today. Although we've had three different starters now with these tailbacks. Caleb Johnson, Williams started, and Patterson starting today. Five receiver set. McNamara slings it out, nearly picked off off of the paw in the hand of Jacob Walter. The Purdue transfer. The ruling is an incomplete pass. Third down. McNamara has four throws to tight ends, just one catch here in this first half to his tight ends. Again, back to throw, and overshoots everyone. Brings up fourth down. He missed as much practice time as Cade McNamara has. It can be difficult to really develop that chemistry. Torrey Taylor put one inside the five, and he has another one. A couple of them inside the five here today. T.J. Hall making the save. Borgay out of his own end zone. Off the hands of Kenny Womack. Cooper Duchesne still trying to hunt down his first interception. This would be a very timely point 
of the game to pick it up this season. And coming on the edge, DeGene making that play. This Iowa defense bringing about three. And the pressure enforcing an incomplete pass intended receiver Anthony Zambucci. And brings up fourth down. And Cooper DeGene who doesn't have a return touchdown in his career, most likely will get some pretty good field position here on this punt. Fields it at the 42. Here goes Luke DeGene. And met right at the 25-yard line. McNamara drops it off to Williams. LaShawn Williams thinking end zone, and it's towards the end zone. He's got a touchdown. His first receiving career touchdown. LaShawn Williams, a big first half, 25 yards. That touchdown took all of eight seconds. Extra point is good for Drew Stevens. Drew Stevens, a low kick to Jamal Haley. And that one will be a touchback. Just barely squeezing into the end zone. Oh, the play clock's down to two seconds. Abdu Salam, just short of the 30-yard line, pulled down by Jay Higgins. Second down and six. Punching his way again, Abdu Salam. In the carries here on this drive. And a flag coming out. Near side, a false start. Might have been Caden Morris. False start. Offense number 83. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Abdu Salam in motion. Off the fingertips of Sambucci and brings up fourth down. Every time this kid in crowd thinks Cooper DeGene may get his hands on the football. They're waiting for it. <laughs> He's done just about everything here in his career. Nearly blocked that punt. And DeGene takes a one hopper and gets tripped up. Good nice play. Nice tackle. Illegal formation. Kicking team, five or more in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And so DeGene pushes up to the 40. That one's sailing out of bounds. Iowa taking its first lead here in the final few minutes of this second quarter off the hands of Williams who has been an absolute star here in this first half. McNamara has only attempted nine pass attempts, four of nine here today. Looks towards his left. And finds Seth Anderson. McNamara again, this time going deep. Finds already has a big catch. And flags coming out, about three of them. Pass interference, defense number zero. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic. First down. There's a moment after last week's game where Cade McNamara was addressing the media and he felt like he didn't give Vines an opportunity on the deep pass on one of the plays against Iowa State. It's another one where Deontay Vines was behind the defense. McNamara just comes up a bit short. It does draw a flag though, which is great for the offense, but it could have been a touchdown. We are now seeing multiple times here attacking towards the outside. McNamara, quick release and trying to hang on. That's a tough play to make. Nico Ragaini couldn't hang on. Williams in the offset. McNamara drops back, but the pass is batted down. And pressure coming, Isaiah Green. 50% conversion rate on third down here so far. Remember, they started two for two. McNamara with some time this time and launches it from the 40-yard line, going for the end zone. The pass is broken up and intercepted in the end zone. It's Kenai really Lovely to end this drive. Kate McNamara's missed so much practice time in recent weeks. You see the frustration by, by Brian Ferentz. Who told us, you know, McNamara is the, the healthiest that he has been and, and hoping, you know, in the fact that he could practice every single day for the first time in the preseason, but he is hot.
second half is underway. The ball trickles into the end zone for a touchback. There is a, a lot of similarities between these two teams. You know, the biggest difference, probably the two turnovers for Iowa with the two picks. Swinging it to the outside, Kenny Womack making the play and getting right to the 25-yard line. Nick Jackson with the tackle. Thank Jay Higgins you. also in on the tackle. The second half here for Western Michigan. Got the start here today, the first of his season. And Jalen Buckley has been quieted a little bit. Remember, he comes in third in the country with about 140 rushing yards per game. Iowa brings some pressure on the outside. Down goes Parquet. Joe Evans wrapping him up. First sack of the season for Joe Evans, the six-year player, second team all Big Ten last year. Cooper DeGene spins back the other way. He's got some tacklers across the 40. The run and run on real estate gets pushed out right around midfield. First game of his career. If you're just joining us, Caleb Johnson out of the game with an ankle injury. Jazian Patterson was the, the running back who started this game, but we've seen about four different running backs in different capacities for Iowa here today. We got a three tight end set and motion by Caleb Brown. And rolling out, connecting with Addison Ostringa, picking up the first down. LeSean Williams is back in. Over 100 yards on the ground, and he takes the handoff in the first half, but gets pushed back to the 40-yard line. Lou Esposito, one of the coaches retained under first-year head coach Lance Taylor. His recruiting capability, the fact that his defenses have been ranked fairly high in the country and in the Mid-American Conference. Swinging it out again to Williams. And only really a, a gain of a couple. Called him a great communicator, recruiter, as we mentioned. And when he retained him, multiple players went up to Coach Taylor and said, thank you for keeping him on the staff. Third and eight, McNamara. Avoiding the pressure, stays on his feet, but coming over to finish the job is Isaiah Green. Sambucci to receive the punt. First and 10, here in the third quarter. Bourget still in at quarterback and just gets sniffed out by Nick Jackson. What a hit, the ball is loose. And that's a loss of 13 on the play. Second and 23. Okay, with the short pass play. And again, Jackson making the play. Connection with Leroy Thomas. Third and long. Borgay, 5 of 11 passing here today, and a flag in the backfield. Ball start. Offense number 29. Five yard penalty, third down. Six penalty against this Western Michigan offense. Borgay. And just wheeled down by Max Llewellyn. It'll be a safety for Iowa. Ontario Thompson had been sniffing around all day, and that time he was all over that punt. We're here to promote. We've been talking about it in, yes. the, in the first half. Tickets still available for the crossover at Kinnick. Yes. Yes, we're going to have a crossover in Kinnick here, playing a basketball game. Looking forward to it. We have 44,000, I think, tickets sold, but we're, you know, we got a couple more thousand. We're going to be praying hard for good weather, I'm <laughs> telling you. Uh, yeah, we, we do have a contingency plan of going into. Sean Williams with a big gain across to the 35. We'll move it into Carver if oh, yeah. we have to, uh, but hopefully we don't have to do that, and we're going to have a great day. And Doug Bruno from uh, DePaul University has been just tremendous in being a part of this with us, and we're looking forward to it. You know, here we go. Here we go, Hawks. Three tight end set. And yes. using all kinds of running backs. Kamari Moulton with the carry. Bustle finishing it off defensively. Well, obviously, we would have loved to win that game. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a no-brainer. But I think we taught America how to finish second better than anybody could. Um, our team, you know, I will never. Bolton gets the carry and pushed out right at the five-yard line. Got Amen. about five and a half left to play here in the third quarter. Notice Again, how things picked up when Coach joined us yeah, up here. Yeah, yeah. Hawkeye fans are going to have you keep up, <laughs> stay up here all game. A fumbled snap. Moulton 
trying to cut on the outside. Again in the backfield, showing a power formation. Holton takes oh, a yes. in his first career touchdown. Yes. Might possibly be going for two. McNamara is still staying out here on the field. We're up by 12 right now. Makes perfect sense. Do the, point do the quick math. Yeah. They teach you math here at Iowa, do they? On occasion. <laughs> Been a couple of decades. Got to remember a bit of it. The Sean Williams, your running back. Three receivers set to the left side. McNamara takes a yes. peek. And the contact is made. Eric Hall hangs on. And the two-point conversion is successful. Make it 24-10, Iowa. Touchback. Yard differential in this quarter tells the story. Western Michigan, 107 yards in the first quarter, but just 94 cents. Across the middle and over the hands of Kenny Womack. Pressure coming by Jay Higgins. The flag also near side. Personal foul, illegal blindside block. Offense number five. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So first and 22. Bourget off the one foot. Well over the intended receiver again, Kenny Romack. Drop back opportunity. And nothing there. Third and 22. This drive has been going in all the wrong directions here for Western Michigan. And a flag coming out. The ball's popped loose. Iowa has it, but we'll see what the laundry's about. Iowa with a fumble recovery. But a flag on the play. Holding. Offense number 75. The penalties decline. Result of play is a fumble recovered by the defense. With the empty set. Raga Ini makes the grab. Apologize though for the non-PI call and uh, his disdain for that after last week's game. And it's Moulton pushing his way in. And the ball is loose. It popped back out. Moulton at one point thought that he had crossed the goal line. And then the ball popped loose and ends up at about the, the two-yard line here for Iowa. He got so excited when he began to get near the goal line. Great contact balance from Moulton. Tried to reach the football out. And then the leg of the defender knocks it away. Was he across the paint, though? Did he cross the plane of the goal line? Is there going to be a review? I have a lot of questions, Lisa. Well, you know, I think our answer is going to be the snap <laughs> here coming up. There's no challenge here so far from the Iowa side. They're going to give Moulton another chance, and he makes good on it. How about a couple of touchdowns for the freshman today? And still perfect in his career. Multi-pole devices? Multi-view. Whatever you prefer. Another touchback. Bourget, your quarterback. Buckley, the running back. Broncos, again, have used two different quarterbacks here today. High snap, Bourget handles. And the give for about a, a gain of five for Buckley. And Buckley spinning, maneuvering, falling just short of the sticks. Bringing up third down. This time Western Michigan showing up team. Buckley motions back. 
Got to get a yard, and Buckley pushing his way to gain that yard. Y.A. Black making the tackle. Shifty gaining a few yards. He had given Western Michigan the first first down of the quarter. Uh, Jalen Buckley, you mentioned, walk on to scholarship with two of his other teammates, too, by the way. Buckley, Trey Allen, and Mason Nelson are going from walk-ons to scholarship. Big pass play down the field coming out of that quarter break. And it's Jelani Galloway who trots in into the end zone. Second touchdown of the day for Western Michigan. A gain of 60. And a flag down by the 43-yard line. So they'll take it back. Sitting on the 35 yard line. The six is wiped away. Nick Jackson with another tackle. Third and six. Bourquet getting flushed out of the pocket. Incomplete. But the first rule of duty every time you play D line for the Hawkeyes stop the run first. That punt was almost blocked. Devin Hilson was close to getting it. DeGene wrapped up and pulled down at about a 21-yard line. McNamara drops back and finds Eric Hall. That's a big gain, and it's what kind of everyone maybe in the stadium has been waiting for. Man, is he a good football player. That's his first catch of the day. Terrell Washington ball here. And this is Terrell Washington Jr. Washington Jr. in the backfield. McNamara gets sacked right at about the 48-yard line. Mason Nelson, one of those players from walk-on to scholarship player making the play. And that's where we stand at the beginning of the four, 31 to 10. Iowa at midfield on third and 19. Cade McNamara, the quarterback, getting his third start, and he gets dropped back-to-back -back plays. Joshua Nobles with his first full sack of the season. And even in a scenario like that, it's very unlikely that you're going to pick up third and 19. So discretion is the better part of valor. Get the football out of your hands. You certainly would like it for the pass protection to hold up better, more succinctly. You don't want Jennings Dunker turning his shoulders like that. But in the end, there was a check down available to Kay McNamara. Four sacks on the day for this Western Michigan defense. And a touchback. All those positive things. I mean, folks saw just the, the short interview that we did with Lisa Bluter, but she stood in here the entire third quarter yeah. even during a play like that. <laughs> Trying to spin out of trouble. Jay Higgins with another tackle. Here's third and seven. Bourget keeping it himself and tackled at the 25-yard line by Ethan Herkin, just a pickup of two. Kirk Ferentz said that, you know, when, they, when he meets with some of the other head coaches here at the university, they all just enjoy each other's company. Weijin with the fair catch call. You just leaked confidence all over the place with that whole three <laughs> touchdown thing a second ago. For a second, I thought I did my math wrong. <laughs> I had to look at the scoreboard again. <laughs> Shifty move and spinning. Cut it loose. It's there. And we have seen in his Big Ten champ leading the Michigan Wolverines uh, out of the, I don't know, the doldrums of their consecutive losses to Ohio State. He has done it before. He will do it again for the home. First down pickup just short of uh, midfield. It is a three touchdown lead. I agree. Okay. Like, wait, why is she hesitating? You just in the booth, like, you just gave it's like standing ball. next to Kay McNamara. Like, just let it rip, Lisa. You got it. <laughs> 21 points. Dave McNamara under center here this time. <laughs> and we've seen him go under center a few times 
here in the first couple of games. Again, trying to chew up some clock. Terrell Washington, Jr., the heavy lifting on this drive. Another first down pickup. Terrell Washington, Jr., getting it on the ground. Over 200 yards here for uh, a group of, of running backs here today. 218 total for everyone involved on the ground. You have Cade McNamara as a proven commodity, as, as a championship winning quarterback who showed some talents as a passer. Yes, he got beat out by J.J. McCarthy, but hopes are high and should continue to be high for what this Iowa offense will have the potential to access with Cade McNamara as their QB. Shiftiness here with this offense and this play call. On the end around, big yardage for Seth Anderson. And a flag coming in late. There is no foul for a horsepower tackle. After the play, on sportsman like conduct, offense number 64, 65, defense number 24. The penalty is offset. First down. In the center, Logan Jones in the open field, continuing to block, sticking with his block. You love seeing it down the field, just center, 30, 40 yards down the field. And then at a certain point, yeah, you want to stall him out, Debo. I'm guessing in the film room, they're probably going to have a good time. Right <laughs> so Iowa on the 11-yard line. Terrell Washington, Jr., you're back. Just in case not everyone got it. All in motion. McNamara. He's got some room to move there on the right side. And intended, he was looking for Seth Anderson. If there was an opportunity here for Cade McNamara to take off and run the football, I would imagine a lot of Hawkeye fans, folks here at Kinnick Stadium, are glad that he didn't. We saw earlier that his legs still don't quite seem to be completely under him. He does have the soft tissue injury that did admit during the week. It was a quad. He's looking for a touchdown pass, not a touchdown run here. He tried to spot throw it where Seth Anderson would have been the only one to have an opportunity to make the grab. Now third and seven. Pass is deflected and it's loose. Broncos come up with it, but I'm going to guess that it's got to be an incomplete pass. His arm going through the motion. And that is Marshawn Nealon, though, who's visibly hurt time out. after that play. Really bad sign for Western Michigan, one of their best defenders. We will clean it up after this. <laughs> 31 yard attempt here by Drew Stevens, meanwhile. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. I want to workshop it a bit. And just see, you know, folks can hit me up on Twix. If you have any ideas for, for what the moniker, that's what it's called now, right? <laughs> it's X, I think. Oh, all right, all right. Combine the two, my apologies. Twix might be the candy bar, which would make sense because you seem to always be hungry for your sweets. So X. that's probably where that reference comes Combination from. Combination of the two. Yeah. Halfway to the sticks on that run. Carson Shire now entering the game here for this Iowa defense. That's what gets you after you do this for so long, and you want to be at the point where you can still. It's one thing Phil Parker, Iowa's defensive coordinator, talked to us about a bit as well. After you've been doing this for a while, to make sure that the bright moments, the fun times, the victories, and now there's been 200 of them in total for Kirk Ferentz, 
The ball was marked just short of the first down marker and pushing it back. Western Michigan isn't going to get that first down on third down. Brian Allen with the big defensive stop. Had a handful of fourth down attempts last week. You see their, their numbers for the season against Syracuse. Hefty dose of that coming against the Orange last week. The pass is incomplete. Intended receiver was Will Mack. And Lance Taylor, the first year head coach at Western Michigan, his team jumped out to another 7 0 lead. They did it against Syracuse last week, did it against Iowa this week. But the defense stepping up, holding the last six non conference opponents to 14 points or fewer. And holding Western Michigan to 10 points here so far today. Uh, the journey is, is, is interesting. When we talked about Kurt Ferentz and everything he's accomplished, certainly has seen many. Many defenses, many great defenses in his time. Now Deacon Hill, the backup quarterback, getting some time, and the handoff here to Max White. Pressure coming to Deacon Hill, but he gets the ball out just in time and finds Steven Stilianos. Little to Max White, smothered in the backfield. Hill out of the shotgun. Swings the pass over just short of the goal line to Ostringa. The Penn State Nittany Lions await the Iowa Hawkeyes next week. We've seen, seems apparent, Cade McNamara, while he says as healthy as he's been at any point so far this season, still not completely healthy. Third. Starting tight ends out as well. These reps matter. Third and goal. Oh, almost a, a pass to lead Stilianos there in the end zone. Brings up fourth down. All guys going for it on fourth down. Max White finds the end zone. Western Michigan team getting tested by two Power Five teams back to back weeks. Syracuse last week and Iowa, both of those games on the road. Final few seconds ticking off. 